How many of you have voted for having the college change its name? Okay. So how many of you have voted for having the college keep its name? Okay. Okay. It will be interesting to hear your perspectives on why. Yeah, I know you're only one. It's not fair. <laughs> and why the college is putting is proposing that, and you know what it means to you as students or faculty or people who work in the college. And, um, I, I teach a class that's a, uh, Applied Behavioral Sciences, which is in the bachelor's program. And I heard my students all talking about it last night before last, saying they thought it was a great idea. Because they're getting, they're in the bachelor's program. And they think that's going to help their chances of getting into graduate school. That's one perspective. And um, so this is a place where we can certainly talk about our perspectives and have a conversation, even if our speaker is not here to present on it. So I'd like to hear some of, of your ideas. Why are you? Why do you think it's you want to keep it as a community college? Even in the back, yeah. Because uh, I don't know why why they want to change it. Mm -hmm. Like first, uh, I would like to know why they want to change the name. So after that, I'm gonna like now I have the idea they're gonna keep it because I don't know the reason they wanna change it. Mm -hmm. So maybe after that. I'm gonna okay. Keep it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, my friend just graduated from one of the bachelor programs, uh -huh. and I think that community college people think about it as being two-year programs, um, individual two-year, a complete two-year program, or as a transfer program, and I think it's confusing to employers or to graduate programs that. You've got a bachelor's degree from community college. Uh huh. Okay, that makes makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, just the I have a, the same idea, but um, like colleges are known like uh, they they are giving courses that to transfer or to go to other universities after you've done two years uh, courses, mm -hmm. and then after when you, when you graduate or when you get a bachelor degree from the colleges, and then. When you when you say that I'm graduated or just I got bachelor degree from the colleges, the listeners or the people those who are listening for you, they got confused because they don't take college, they don't get they, they can't give a bachelor's and then they don't give more values for your bachelor degrees. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. It's certainly a different perspective if you're in the bachelor's program, I think. Yeah. What do you think, Pedro? Uh, I think we should keep it. Why? Uh, I mean, we are here to serve the community, uh, I think. Uh, I mean, I've been involved in this situation. I'm in the ASC, and so I think their perspective is that it will be more appealing to students and to people in the bachelor's program. I mean, I'm in the bachelor's program. I have no <laughs> problem with that. My whole thing is that it's not going to change what the school it's not going to change anything in the school. I mean, anybody can Google search the name of the school and it's still going to say that we're a community college because we're still a community college. So, I mean, by removing... Even if we change the name, they'll still... I mean, it's still, we're still going to be a community college even if you remove the word. Yeah. It's not going to magically change... We'll still offer to your programs. It's not going to magically change, to me, it's not going to magically change the perspective of businesses have. And if you do a search or you do any type of research on the school, it's still going to show that we're a community college. Okay. So to think that we're going to trick businesses or other people to think that we're now a college, I, I think is a false thing to try to tell. And I think that it'll slowly. So we're mis I think it'll, misleading people. I think we're misleading people personally, mm -hmm. and I think that it will be slowly pushing poor people and people of color out because this is a community college. I mean, I was a student that took many years off, and I knew that I could come here and get accepted. No so the, what my the GPA name was. of it made a difference to your deciding to come here. Oh, yeah. uh -huh. okay. At least for me. Uh huh. It's an important perspective. Yeah. What do they want to change the name to? I didn't get to see the survey. I usually take them right away, but that was really busy. Seattle Central College. All they want to do is remove the word. Take away the community. community. Yes. Yeah. Okay. From all three of the colleges. Well, so I went to Bellevue Community College before, and now it's like Bellevue College or whatever. I still call it Bellevue Community College, like when I'm talking to people. Uh -huh. I mean, I like, I never, and I hear tons of people always still calling it Bellevue Community College, so I think that this has been Seattle Central Community College for so long that I don't think anybody's going to start calling it anything different. And a lot of times, 
I mean, I call it like between some of my friends because a bunch of us go to different ones. We call it central most of the time mm -hmm. anyway. When you say like, what school do you go to? Oh, I go to central. Central. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's my favorite name for it. Although, you know, I I do love the word community, and I'm really proud of working in a college that is its mission is to serve the community and help the community to get the experiences they need to continue you know, realizing what they want to do in life. You know, I've heard some, I've heard some concerns, I've heard some, some concerns about it that, well, if, if anything, the, the college, Seattle Central is already moving away from the idea of community mm -hmm. in the sense of kind of how, many, uh, how much resources uh, it's putting into, say, the international programs. Uh, and you know, one of the one of the main talking points about this is that because international students bring so much money and there's less funding going into education and all of that, uh, so I mean that's already happening now. So it already seems to me that they're moving away from the idea of community in the first place, and just changing the name will give further justification of that. Not to mention that it's sort of a step in the direction of increasing privatization of higher education. Do you happen to know exactly. what the percentage of students are that are international students now? And they're paying a lot of the bills for our college because they pay full tuition. And it's not subsidized by the state. They pay twice as much as the students who are from Washington State. I believe it's something like that. And um, especially during the economic crisis, that we began to take on more and more of those students in order to keep the college going, pretty much. Um, they do bring a lot to our environment in terms of you know, cultural understanding, and, um, but there are lots of issues, too, about how money gets spent, where is our mission going, how has it changed the college, how is our culture different? One of the things I was thinking about is, you know, if we have the, the money, any money, to drop the word community from our paper, we have, that means we have money to spend on, on better things. Because it's not changing the word Seattle Central Community College to Seattle Central College means that all kinds of forms, all kinds of things are gonna have to be changed. And I know, I know that it's not gonna happen overnight, but that still means to me that there's money somewhere in the coffers to do that. And if there's money to do that, I'm, I'm mo going to be a lot more happy to leave the name as it is and take that money and use it for educational purposes. Mm -hmm. So if it nothing be, else... It, it probably will be an expensive... It's, it's, an, it's an extremely expensive... Rebranding is an extremely expensive uh, process. I, I've seen it done in uh, nonprofit organizations outside the academic world. Mm -hmm. I've seen it done with... Uh, Bellevue College, and it's extremely expensive. I don't care how much time you're going to take to do it, it's still an expense that gets on the budget. And if you take five years, ten years, it's still on the budget for that time at an expense. So I don't like the idea of another expense on the budget line, on the budget at all. And if we have money for that, I think that money needs to be spent in a more reasonable, more educational way. That's one, one argument um, against it. There, I'd like to hear more comments that might be positive for it, so we have some balance in our conversation. I'm just curious about what is the need for the change. I mean, those who want the change, what is the reason they're given for wanting a change before we even yeah. go into the parameters of the pros and cons, you know? But left to me, I think it's fine as it is. I, I have no problem. Even if you have a bachelor's degree from here, it doesn't change the fact that it's a bachelor's degree, regardless of what college it is. Now, a ton of colleges, you know, um, all over the country who offer bachelor's degree. I don't think it should matter. I don't think employers should be looking at or scrutinizing the college itself as much as you know what you have or what you're capable you know of doing. And then again, before they start scrutinizing all of that, they 
you must have gotten through a process before you get to that point. But I'm really curious, what is behind it? Is it some ulterior motive that they're not willing to you know, let us know, or is it a political thing? It's What is it? I, I can't see what it is. I don't know what the uh, ulterior motives might be. Uh, I mean, I'm sure there is alternative motives. Some things that they say that are going to be, I guess, some of the reason, good reasons that they have is they think it'll be, uh, they think that community in the word carries a uh, stereotype. Uh, they feel that it'll be more, they feel that it's a trend because more schools are dropping the word community out of the name. Uh, they think that since we're at offering bachelor's programs, we should drop it. Uh, they have a theory that it'll, it'll bring more students, which is a theory. Um, I mean, those are some of the things that I've heard and reasons that they would like to do it. But also, I mean, they really don't have any evidence to like backing a lot of those things up. Um, I feel that it's gonna, I personally feel like it's a way, like Mr. Jackson said, it's a way to appeal to outside people to come to the school that since you dropped the word community, it's not a community college, it's a college. It's a way to, I guess, make it look a little better for international students, look a little better for people that are gonna to go to bachelor's program. These are the people that pay more money. And what, what irks me about that is the idea that if we're, we're gonna make this change or we're looking at making a change and taking out community so that we can get more people. But community is about having more people. We are, we are already, able to advocate for that. And I think instead of putting money into let's change and change so we can fit in with what they think, how about we put some money and effort into changing what their perception is of community college and not letting it be this place that is looked down on, in a sense. Let's work on that. That's that's where I'm going. Yeah, let's yeah. not let's not work so much on changing your name and said let's spend some of that money to pass out pieces of paper that say this is why community college is way more awesome. Yeah, than show any other well and, and then and then showcase what we have here. Yeah. Showcase so the richness that we have here and put yeah. money into what we already have. Not not try to get people you know, international students what What's wrong with community college? If, if I'm out there, I, I, if we know it's a great thing, we say we're, we're good, then people will, they should adjust. They, we need to put effort into that. I think we need to call Mr. Kilpatrick yeah. down. Yeah. Oh yeah, okay. let's call him. <laughs> we'll call him. Okay. He's see available. Bit. <laughs> He's probably it's getting ready. college a categorization that shows that we offer two-year programs? Is that what that comes from or not? Well, the history. Yeah, there's a whole bu a bunch involved with the history. And some of you have heard the little bit I know, which isn't that much about the history of Seattle Central, but the Seattle <coughs> Central campus really came out of community um, activism to have a campus in the Central District that would be for the people of this area. And um, they originally were going to just build one at North and <coughs> South, and there were protests. And uh, they were able to then to get the legislature to approve a college here in the Central <coughs> District. Um, and then the students started coming, and they saw that the faculty and administrator didn't look like them. And there was no diversity there. And so they protested. They had protests about that. And the school. The college did respond and tried to actively hire people of color for positions in the, in the faculty and administration, and still do actively seek that. Um, then, and the, the Oriental Student Union, as it was called in those days, also had a protest because they wanted to see more Asian faculty here at the college. This college has been associated with so many protests over the years. I mean, that's why Occupy was a natural site for it last year before last, and um, it has been a real grassroots kind of organization and some uh, connected in some ways. Um, I'm not putting that very well, but you get what I mean? That it's been connected to the community and grassroots um, activism for a long, long time, since its inception. 
I think community is a really positive word. And coming here, I definitely feel like I'm in a really supportive community, and that's one of the huge aspects that I enjoy so much. And I do understand the pros of taking the word out, but I also feel like that puts it more toward like academia being really inclusive and sort of not a broad, you know, approachable thing for people. And so that's the reason why I like it. And like you said, just to more have people understand that it is just a stereotype or, you know, that it has a lot of positivity and, you know, maybe it's not going to really, ch what is it going to change? What do you think most students would say? I think it seems pretty <laughs> split, I think, as far as like I haven't I've seen the to. results of the survey at all. They haven't released anything as far as I know. Do you know any secrets? I don't. I don't agree with the survey. Because you're a Swiss student. I thought the survey is, right? I thought the survey is very misleading. I thought the questions were were absurd. I don't feel that any student that didn't have information about what this was about could be able to answer some of those things. And I thought some of those things that were asked, they had no proof that those things were going to happen. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't know. I wasn't very happy with the survey at all. And I wasn't very happy that we were surveyed after the fact. I mean, faculty members were surveyed at the beginning of December. And right. when I was in meetings, I had to ask to make sure that we were going to get surveyed because it wasn't even a positive thing that we were going to get surveyed or not. Well, good thing you're in meetings. And then once we did get surveyed, we got one week to fill it out. And I really felt that the <laughs> survey was very, very the thing is, you're not at the table, you don't have any input. So if you get involved in student activities, you can... There was no pre-advertising of, of the survey coming or anything. Yeah, I mean, I didn't know it was coming until I checked my email. Yeah, uh, I think one of the great things that they're missing about this school, about community colleges generally, and in particular this college, is that community colleges are a great asset in preparation for four-year colleges. And this school serves as one, a great step. Looking at our, our academic standards right now, especially Washington State, as low as it is, community college, because most kids coming out of high schools are not adequately prepared any longer. I think in the past they might have been, but there's been a trend for probably the past 10, maybe 15, maybe 20 years Kids coming out right out of high schools are no longer prepared. So they struggle when they get to four-year colleges. The advantage of having a community college is to prepare them for many of the things that they will be facing when they get there. And they're better prepared when they come here than going direct from high school. And they sh I, I really think they should remain the way it is. It's a great asset for them. They seem do you think the name change will turn some students away? Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. It's, it's exactly, I think that the thing is, I live in the U District, and I'm a little older than most students in the schools that go to college. And when I had to choose about going back to school, I had to choose a school. And it was, do I want to go to a school that's full of 18 year olds? Or do I want to go to a school that's a lot more diverse, more inclusive, and a lot more versatile in, in the group of people that there is? Here, I, I don't feel out of place going down the hallway because I see people who are my age and older taking classes, and the teachers don't act as if I'm out of place or anything else. The students don't act if I'm out of that I'm out of place because it's the atmosphere of this school. It's also, when we're talking about community, I go to North Seattle to visit in the uh, work source and the GSHS office up there, and the office, and the school there is a little separated from this neighborhood, not like here, and it's extremely quiet, the school. You can walk down the hallways and it, you can hear a pin drop. Between classes. It's not here. <laughs> no, even between classes, you cannot do that here. There's always a, a buzz. There's always a, a community feeling, a, a feeling of life in the hallways. Uh, people are always doing something. There's posters and the tabling and all kinds of activities. So you're not, 
it's a lot more engaged. And the fact that we're open, there's no fence between us and the community, mm -hmm. helps. The, I won't say that I love to see every homeless person walking from the street, but I don't. But I like the fact that they're not really locking us in the college to prevent the community from coming in. So it, it makes it. it like makes it. In I'm the, part of the whole neighborhood. Walk right out the door and you're there. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah, I live in Ballard, and that's why I didn't go to the North because I, I went there to like to like look at it and stuff yeah. and see like how long it took me to take the bus there because I take the bus and it was just it it was it, it's like it's just bricks and it's like a compound it's like this compound it feels yeah. like a compound it's really weird and you're like stuck there and like you can't just walk and go get some food you can't meet your friend at Vivachi you can't you know go for happy hour after class really unless you like you take the bus to the mall, or one of your friends has a car, and then you, you know, and so it's, it does, it has like a totally different feeling. Very so, institutional. I mean, right, so if they were gonna be North Seattle College, I might understand that, because they, <coughs> they have similar architecture to Bellevue College, things like that, like it would make more sense to me having been to that mm -hmm. campus, I wouldn't, if I was a student at that campus, I think I'd have a different feel about a name change if I went there, because it has less of a community feel to it. So, so my understanding is that this is a district decision that's going to be made, and it's not up to the individual colleges. Right. So they may vote at North and South even, and they may vote differently at Central. I, we, I don't know. I don't even know if it's voting. It's not really voting even. They're just surveying our opinion. Maybe the board will make up their mind according to what they think is still come down to the Board of Trustees' decision on what they want to do, no matter how the surveys come out. If it doesn't go a certain way, they have to there'll be some protests. I had heard that Seattle Central is also slowly moving away from the certificate and technical programs. And I don't know if that's... Oh, actually, we're adding more. Oh, okay. okay. Well, so maybe I'm well we, did, we did close three programs in the big budget crunch years ago, um, which is really unfortunate because they were great programs to have on our campus, but um, we are going to be offering, um, well, we're offering two more bachelor's programs in health sciences. So they're not two-year programs, but they're um, <coughs> certainly in, in the technical field. Oh, so I think one's in nursing and one's dental, one's dental hygiene. Mm -hmm. Is that for what they're going to do in the new building? They will be yeah. located at the new building. Yeah, and that's ready. I don't know which comes first, though, in terms yeah. of being ready. <laughs> I think the programs will start. I think yeah. they're supposed to start next. Yeah. Yeah. I think the respiratory wow. therapy is the one thing that they're doing with bachelors in. I was originally doing that, but I changed. Oh, there's a respiratory therapy? There, yeah, they're going to have a respiratory therapy one because that's one of the reasons I changed my thing because they wanted me to take way more chemistry than I wanted to take. <laughs> and, um, and also because actually my Dr. Jane decided to change my major. But um, yeah, so the respiratory therapy one starts in the fall. Yeah, the bachelor's the program is. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Yeah. I should know that. <laughs> Sorry. Any comments from? Do we know when that would actually go into effect? Uh, it's still not on their agenda yet. Um, we, as a like as our council, has made a position that we're against it. I mean, we presented it to them as an issue that we're concerned about, um, but it's not like officially on their agenda. So I guess technically they haven't talked about it, mm -hmm. which I'm sure they have. But um, I mean, if anybody has any questions, we table every Monday from nine to one. Uh, in, the, in front of the atrium. Uh, we also have a petition that we're trying to get students to sign that would be against it. Um, uh, I think we're going to be trying to work on having a, a forum or an event around this topic. To we've, Now that the survey's gone out, we've had students coming over like, what is this going, what, what's going on, basically. So, uh, if you have any questions, you feel free to ask. Yeah, I'm so glad you're here. Yeah, me too. <laughs> A lot about what's going on in the student end of things. Yeah. Um, 
So I work in basic and transitional studies and helping students with the transition from basic skills to college level. And so I see a lot of difficulty with that transition and with accessing college programs. And so going off what you said, I don't want to do, I don't want the college to do anything that makes our programs harder to access and harder to get into. Because even the way they are now with, um, with all the student services and with community and the name of the college, it still is hard to um, get enrolled just for people's personal reasons. And so I think it's really important to uh, do whatever we can to put our resources into um, making the college accessible to people that need these programs the most. Mm -hmm. And do you think that that perspective is going to be presented to the communities by someone who can really advocate for it? I think there are some, some students that um, have done that, that have gone from basic skills to college that can like really speak personally to the challenges and barriers and the importance of, um, I guess, just honesty about what the college offers. Um, and so what I'm hearing from everybody, my kind of personal take on it is just that the most like meaning and value comes from people's perspective of what community college means to them and what they want it to continue to be and what changes could be negative. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's the, um, the most important thing yeah. to hold on to. Um, but me personally, without having um, connection to a lot of the <clears throat> history of what the word community means, um, I'm kind of thinking like college is college. So I think having just the word college is inclusive in the fact that all of our programs are college, whether they're the most, the shortest certificate programs up to the bachelor's. Mm -hmm. So I kind of look at it in one way, just the word college being like more open and inclusive um, rather than kind of dividing up different types of, mm -hmm. you know, community colleges and vocational colleges and technical colleges. We're still a two-year college. Even if they do change the name, they can't take that away without completely <laughs> reinventing us, which they would be even mistaken to do because we were very much needed. And, um, and I feel like that's the trend that's already the misleading part. Like when students talk to me about it, I feel like that's the first thing that they ask is that, oh, we're going to be a university or we're going to be something different. I'm like, no, they've already stated that nothing, the educational value or whatever is not changing. It will still be a two-year school. Yeah, we offer more bachelor's programs, but I mean, that doesn't change the fact of like what we are and who we are. Right, right. And you're only going to be three, I think, in the next couple of years, so. That's the whole thing. It's not even like it's the majority of students that they're trying to please. So the change is, it's just the name, but there's so many implications that follow it. But that's the right. thing. I think this conversation is. I mean, then that's the thing that they, I mean, from my, what I've heard, they've already stated, I felt like it's already been stated that not much is gonna change besides the change of the name. So it's like, why would you do it if you aren't gonna change the infrastructure or the educational value or add more resources to the school? I mean, I feel like that's a lot of money, like Matthew said, that could be used towards I mean, fixing the bathrooms. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. yes. how about we have bathrooms where all the stalls lock? <laughs> Slow down a minute. Slow down. Uh, you know, you know, <laughs> I mean, so it's like you're going to you're, you're spend, yeah, like, bathrooms you're gonna spend a, large, a large amount of money to rebrand the school when, I mean, when I feel like there's 10 other projects that I've heard of that they would like to do that could use this money towards it. You know, so to me, this seems like one that would be lower on the, I mean, if lower on the total pool of other financial things that they could be funding. Well, I do feel that at heart, they feel that this is going to help students. I mean, if they, those people who are for this think it's going to help students, and they really, they also have students in mind. I mean, that's what they've said. I, I mean, they can say a lot of things, yeah. though. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But well, I, we don't know <laughs> what they said because they're not, neither the president nor the board has actually came to school to talk to us. And the survey didn't say much at all. 
Uh -huh. Even usually, the, you know, my experience with uh, Dr. Kirkpatrick is that usually when he wants to tell people something, he si not only signs his name on the document, but he sends the email from his own personal email account. Yeah. This came from a message, not a, a, an account that you can respond to at all. Yeah. So I so would I, not counsel you not to assume that Dr. Kilpatrick is for changing the name. I'm not assuming anything. I'm just saying he doesn't because say he one way or the other. I I've heard that he is not for that, but I think this uh, um, my I opinion like changing the name is I think they are planning the committee, they were considering several central committee calendar are targeted to to prevent for the people who are getting by bachelor degree from our college and then they have some questions from outsiders and they say that's how the college they give bachelors. Mm -hmm. And then the, the students just who have bachelor degree from our college, they feel like, you know, discomfort with that question and then I think they're trying to avoid that question or just to prevent that question that came from other people that's attacks to the students those who get a bachelor degree from our colleges. Yeah, I, I think you're right. I mean, I think that's the concern is that some colleges may not accept their, or count their degree as highly as they would from a college, which doesn't make any sense because they, colleges tend to have articulation agreements with each other and they tend to know each other so that they they would come here, they'd know what, they already know what this That's college is. Yeah, exactly. So we're accredited, and, and our bachelor's program is accredited. Um, but I understand that concern that from students, that if they think that that might impede their progress, I don't, I don't think it will impede their progress, but um, that concern certainly has to be addressed. I mean, I feel like you go. Uh, I think I think the issue I think the issue with the name is really, really as superficial as the name that is literally emblazoned on these buildings. Um, again, if you just take a look at what the school is doing, uh, you see. I mean, you can just walk down the hallways and you can see it. I mean, the the, the new center for international students that that center is in place of what used to be a daycare for uh, to help people in the community with families. Now, you know, not to say that international students don't have families of their own that need, that could have used a, a service like that, but I think it's more, I think it's dominantly a concern of the community. And then on top of that is that if, I mean, if there's clear evidence that uh, international students bring in several times the amount of money that, say, people from the community uh, bring in, then I mean, if money is the goal, then obviously you're going to advertise to those who bring in more money. And it seems to make sense uh, to me. Provide those you know, facilities. I mean, the name, the name, I have a feeling, is going to be changed whatsoever. And, and I would say also that that decision is being made without the community. I mean, just listening to what's, been, what's being told about this survey, this confusing survey. I mean, this is a thing that's happened in legislation here in Seattle for as long as Seattle's existed, right? Confusing, kind of confusing uh, inquiries to people who ultimately don't have much of a decision that caused them to vote against their own self-interest. And this is something that's happening now. So I think, I think again, the, the discussion about whether or not school is going to change the name, and I have a feeling it's going to change the name anyways, because once we're all out of here, the next group of people coming in aren't gonna have a clue, let alone about the clue about the activist history of this school that was mentioned. A lot of people walking down these hallways don't give a damn about about who came before. They're just here to get their degree and to go get a job, if they may. Well, it would be great if those people joined an alumni association, and if that alumni association was strong and continued to support what was happening here. But changing the name with it might that affect alumni? Um, I don't know. I just came. I think there's two uses of community here too, like one community like you're talking about implies like local community. International students, you know, we might consider that like some global community or something, you know, which the world kind of tends to be progressing in that direction. So I could see where community could work in both ways. So, you know, maybe, maybe we add a word 
local community or something, you know. Like. Mm -hmm. Well, to, to that point, right, mm -hmm. I'm not, uh, the position that I'm taking is not that, say, that there's anything wrong with bringing in, say, international students, but it's weighing the impact on the immediate community, for sure, right? I mean, gentrification is a huge thing uh, in Seattle, period. Um, and not to say that you know, international students are a part of that, but again, you know, if, there, if, if a school founded, if a school founded around the activists, the activism of community members who demanded that there be a school that served them is decades down the road, uh, you know, basically, I, I don't know, uh, it's the, the, the college goes over their heads in a way to pull in money from outside uh, that won't even say go back to that community again, right? I, I don't know. It's uh, again, there's, there's this, there's nothing. I have no issue say with, I guess, international students or the effort to reach out to them, right? I mean, I, I believe in that idea of say, you know, this globalization, or at least I, I understand where you come from with the, with these ideas of like we're 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 a global society now, yada yada yada. But at the same time, it's just that. If you take a look around us, you know, we see these really distinct things that don't really have much of a benefit to the community per se, like the people yeah. who were here. And I, I don't think that... So that what, what's happened there, too, is that the international programs have, we're seeing a separation, where what I'm thinking is, if community is, is community the thing that drew them to this place, to this college? Well, wouldn't you imagine that there would be integration and the international students would have more of a connection with people who are from this area? And having the separation there is not helping. The, the additional money, I feel, could be put towards building relationships among all of us. And if it seems, again, if what did they come here for? Why did they choose Seattle Central Community College? Why did they choose another school. It's for that same reason, because we're accessible, we're, op we're open to everybody. So then, then let them have the full benefit of that learning, of learning not just the academics, but learning but to be with of all of us and to understand what our lives are, and we can learn from them too. Yeah. To me, that's true learning, yeah. but and that's not happening. Yeah, and I agree, <laughs> right? and I agree with that, but, and it's funny too, because when, when talking about these things, it almost it would almost seem that people are placing the blame on international students, but they won't take a look at say the administration here that is undercutting the well, community the to get at those international students to bring yeah. their money here. Yeah, right. Well, we could be appealing more to our community members to try to get more people. To you guys are somewhere. saying such awesome things, and I wish I wish we had pe people here who could really you know who are decision makers at the college. Well, I think that yeah. if like this change is being proposed by whoever, by the district, because um, I feel like we've been having this conversation for a while now, yeah, for, like, yeah, months and year, months. yeah. And doesn't it seem like if there was this change proposed, like there would be reasons why or why not to, um, kind of just put out there so it's not so confusing, so we could at least be like having this conversation and looking at these are the reasons why and these are why not and to try and figure out like the best balance because it seems weird that like there's this change proposed in, in a survey but the, and we're all kind of throwing out reasons why and why not but why isn't that like kind of publicized well we i was in a, <coughs> a meeting where we actually came up one for the faculty members they actually received an email before their survey saying these are whys and why nots, this is what the survey is about. They gave them all background and then gave them the survey a couple of days later. I'm wondering why we didn't receive the same type of thing as students who were asked a survey of three questions. Yeah. I mean, they still, we came up with it. I don't get why they couldn't have shipped, gave it to us as a why, it was a pros and cons list of why this district or whoever wanted to change the name. I feel like everybody that cares kind of wants more information about both sides. Totally, and I don't understand why they didn't relay that message to us. That's why I felt kind of that? insulted that it was How's just like a thing to make us happy. I'm See, yeah. I'm on the college council. Right. The ones so that yeah, came up you're with the it. ones who sent that out. Yeah. Yeah. 
But so the students didn't get that. That's we wrong. didn't get anything. <laughs> yeah, we didn't. We, and I didn't. I was kind of confused by the email, and I didn't look at the date. And I thought I had more time too. It was like a relatively short window that you had from when I got the email. Mm -hmm. And we had one week. Yeah, yeah, I feel like before, like people are. I'm oh, sorry to interrupt. No, no. It's like before everybody's in this position where we're putting all this effort into like really like thinking and caring so much about about this change it should be kind of stated why like this is even a conversation yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well and i think i think the thing that gets me so mad is that if anybody was here in the spring last year this got brought up in the spring last year which had a huge backlash from students and faculty members in the atrium mm -hmm. that held the yeah uh forum of some sort and then it gets brought up in about October in the college council very quietly, like, hey, this is what the Board of Trustees wants you to do. And as you can see, they haven't publicized it at all to anybody, really. So to me, that's more of just a reason why it's, uh, I feel that it's one of those things that they're really trying to just sneak in behind everybody's back. Yeah, but really, it's just like creating a big, like, Because, uh, I mean, they already brought it, they brought it to the public in spring last quarter, and they got huge backlash. You know, everyone is very angry about the situation. Yeah. And then this year it gets brought up very quietly in a meeting and um, they send a survey out to the faculty. Um, you almost feel like they already made their minds up a little bit. And then it's already like okay. a done deal and, and then they can say, hey, oh, we sent you that, that survey. And so if you had a problem with it or whatever, and if the survey is written in a misleading way with a bias, it's not really an accurate survey anyway, but it could be skewed to produce the results that they were looking for totally. to say we already made this decision totally. as well. Well, I've always felt that students have more say about what happens here with the administration than faculty do. And I know you probably feel, it diff feel differently, but um, you know, what, is, what are students doing to convey these different viewpoints to the administration? I mean, I would write them an email. You're more than welcome. The Board of Trustees have monthly meetings. I mean, I've been going to the past two just to, they have open uh, public 15 minutes or whatever. You're more than welcome. I know when the one that we had in December, there was faculty members and multiple students who were there to basically protest against this. Um, I mean, anybody's welcome. If you ever want to know where they're at, I mean, you can always ask the student leadership. Um, they usually have an idea within a week um, I think the next one's like at North Seattle. The meeting where they were talking about the change of allowing protests on campus, there were a ton of people at that meeting. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I think they expanded the like, open conversation time. I mean, it's one of those things I feel like if students put enough pressure on it, then I'm sure they would back off, hopefully. But public hearing. They should have a public hearing. I know that I've been in the past sending emails to people in the administration and in the uh, Board of Trustees. One of them, Board of Trustee members, uh, Albert Shaw, uh, came to school and stopped at one of my classes and he handed out his card and said, if you have anything on your mind, just email me. And if you don't know how to get an email to a member of the Board of Trustees, on the website for the school, on the bottom, it, first page it has a thing that says district and you can look up their name and if you don't know their names there's a place to look that up too and you can send them emails and they will read them hopefully <laughs> hopefully hopefully <laughs> but they probably will because they probably don't get that many and no, they probably um, don't get that many. yeah I would encourage everybody to give their point of view to the board of trustees if you have any thoughts that you want to convey to them Um, <laughs> I'm sorry about the speaker not coming today. I appreciate that you all made the speaking happen. And um, next week, next week. I, by the way, I'm Kelly. This is Sharon, <laughs> and this right. is Jason. Okay. Um, next week is February sixth. Confronting the myth that slavery ended with the 13th Amendment. <laughs> Mass imprisonment in the 21st century. And that's one of, that's um, a network facilitated by Christina Taylor. And she's a program coordinator with international education programs. How about that? Okay. <laughs> so, come back and let's hear from her.
Yeah, next week, 12 o'clock, this room, every Thursday, we have a whole bunch of other things coming up, and they're listed at the reference desk if you want to see the schedule. So thanks so much for coming today. Well, there will also be an article about this in the, in the circuit, uh, the next issue that comes out, so interesting. Thank you.